Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your original internet shop teacher, and this is tips number 864, entitled, What is a Differential Thread? So here's a couple examples of differential threads that I made up for this demonstration, for this video. And essentially what a differential thread is, although you can have a thread like this in many different configurations, and even possibly with a left-hand thread, but anyway, it's two threads on the same shaft with different pitches, or should we say different leads. But let me give you a couple definitions that I have written down here that might help you understand what this is if you've never seen one. And here's another example, so I'm going to do a double experiment here momentarily. Here are two definitions of a differential screw or a thread. The top one taken from Bpedia, the bottom one from Wikipedia, and if you're interested in this, do a search on the internet and you'll find a lot of other information, but it's rather obscure. I will not read these to you, I'll put still pictures at the end of the video. Most everyone knows these definitions for threads, but I want to go over them because it's quite pertinent here. Thread pitch is the distance from a point on one screw thread to a corresponding point on the adjacent thread. And the thread lead is the distance a thread moves along its axis with respect to a mating part in one complete revolution. On a single thread, the lead and pitch are the same. On a double thread, the lead is equal to twice the pitch. Now since the this is a single thread, so the lead and the pitch are the same, and I may use those words interchangeably. And these pictures out of McCarthy's Machine Shop book show again what a single thread is, and a double thread, and then comparison here between the lead and the pitch on the single and the thread. But we're really only concerned with this one, where the lead and the pitch are the same. You know, the actual reason I'm making this video is because I made a recent video entitled Short Subject Number 31, The World's Smallest Boring Head, and here it is. And this little boring head here incorporates a differential thread which allows an extremely, extremely fine thread or fine adjustment without using a super fine thread. Otherwise, we would have to have a thread in here that had 100 threads per inch, which is non-existent and I believe impossible to make. So let me pull this screw out real quickly again to show people in case you haven't seen that other video. But again, the point here is that when we turn the screw one full revolution, the boring bar the cross slide here on the dovetail is actually only moving ten thousandths. So each graduation on this little dial here is two tenths of a thousand. Let me pull that screw out. Now as I back out this dovetail portion here, watch how slowly this little dovetail which I'm pointing at here turns. Or I should say moves. You almost can't tell that it's moving. There's the end of the screw. All right, I'll back it all the way out now. Now it comes apart, and here is the differential screw. So there's two threads, two very fine threads, and two different diameters. And this is my first differential screw, and it's simply a piece of 1 half 13 threaded rod, and I've turned it down on this end and threaded it 3 8 fine, that's 3 8 24. And I put a little handle on it, and I've got a little test fixture I made here. It is not a vise, it's something I made up real simply for this video. And I'm going to use this with two threads. There's the other one I'll talk about in just a second. But you'll notice here that this is a half 13 thread right here. And 
This is the 3H24 right here. Never mind the two other ones for the moment. If you don't like the math, fast forward just a little bit. But here's example one that I just showed you. The 3H24 thread has a lead or a pitch of 1 24th of an inch or in a decimal that's 42 thousandths. The half 13 is, has a lead of uh, 1 13th of an inch which is 77 thousandths. Now if you subtract one from the other, that's the difference when we're subtracting, we have 35 thousandths. So I will prove to you here with a little test fixture that when we advance the work or whatever it may be with this thread we will move 35 thousandths which is not all that fine I should have used a piece of 1 half 20 here but I did not have any but the less the difference there the, the finer the movement. Does that make any sense? Let me set that up. And this is how you set these up. You have to start one of the threads that's the coarse thread and I'll put the other one in place. It almost looks like a jaw but it's not. So we have a very fine movement of this movable piece of 35 thousandths per revolution. Let's prove that with an indicator. I'm going to zoom in on the indicator here in a moment but this is the setup here where I'm basically bringing it in and this is real wobbly, so I have to be careful of that. Until it comes to zero, which is blurred for you right now. And then I will move this. I've got a little sticker here, exactly one turn, and you'll see that it moves 35 thousandths. I'll zoom in. Zoomed in and bring it in to zero or thereabout. It's kind of tricky, and I'm holding down real tight and advancing exactly one revolution. And you can see it moved 35 thousandths. So I'm just proving the math here. It may seem silly. And here's the other differential thread. And let's go over the math real quickly. So in example number two, the smaller thread is 5 16 24, which has a lead or a pitch of 1 24th of an inch or 42 thousandths. And the larger of the two threads is a 7 16 20 which has a pitch or lead of 1 20th of an inch, which is 50 thousandths. And when we subtract one from the other, that's the difference, it's only 8 thousandths. So that is an, would require an extremely fine thread to move only 8 thousandths of an inch per revolution. But let's check that out and prove it with the dial indicator. Now the reason that this thread is so far off center as it was an afterthought. I was only going to do one of these and then I decided to do two because the fineness, if there's such a word, was not that uh, amazing with this big one but it is I think a lot more interesting with the fine one with two fine threads so I'll set that up now. First watch this little demonstration here. I put witness marks and let me turn it now. I've got a, a little color right here to show one full revolution also. But you can see how slow the movement is. Now the indicator. Okay, I'll bring the test fixture in and zero it out as best I can. I'm holding down tightly and I'll move it exactly one revolution. And there you go. Eight thousandths, eight and a half thousandths, depends on the wiggle factor here too. So that's a very fine movement. I hope that you understood that and kind of enjoyed the simple little demonstration. And you can make this type of thread in some device that you might be building over the years that needs fine movement. This is a Greenfield tap wrench and you've seen this in other videos but there's a differential thread in here but one end of the thread is left-handed and your assignment is to tell me what 
you have around your shop or have you ever witnessed a differential thread and in what kind of device because it's kind of hard to find information on that so if you have any information put it in the comment section below hope you enjoyed this short video on differential threads and find some use for it if not possibly a little entertainment because it really is a rather interesting uh, phenomenon that's going on here, isn't it? And there isn't a whole lot of information to be read up on regarding this, unless it's in engineering books, but I couldn't find anything. Well, anyway, this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.